Hey, hey, everybody. This is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, messing with a mic. And uh, this is my Avengers blush reaction. Now, for you guys that don't know, did one of these for Spider-Man. Think I did one for Wonder Woman. Definitely did one for Captain America. Um, this is my initial reaction. I'm just getting back from the theater. Okay. So, now that the movie is fresh in my head, I just want some of the gut reactions. This is going to be a no-spoiler thing because I'm putting this up on a Sunday. And, um, you know, I want to give people time to see it. So, what did I think? Well, this being the culmination of Phase 3? Yeah, the third Avengers movie, and they, and they always end. Um, the end of Marvel Phase 3. I gotta say... Not only not what I expected, but, um, yeah, a little big, a little big on this one. Um, this is very much a greatest hits movie. So if you haven't watched at least Thor Ragnarok, um, Civil War, Iron Man, um, Iron Man's one and two, um, and Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Ju -ju -ju. Yeah, yeah. That, that's about it. If you haven't watched those, you're going to be totally, totally, totally lost. Oh, let's throw Guardians of the Galaxy Part 1 in there as well. So we've got those. And again, talk about a greatest hits movie. Um, this movie was interesting. It was interesting. Um, I got to say, the hype train kind of ruined it for me a little bit um because i went in hoping not to expect very much i just want to watch it as a movie on its own merit but let's face it the whole advertising machine yeah that 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 wasn't gonna let it happen sorry i fell for that spell um but um there were some upsides some downsides um what I am going to say is that this movie was, of course, shot beautifully. I mean, what can I say that the internet hasn't already said? It's a Marvel movie. It's a big budget thing. Um, they've been working on this for a long time. They had a couple of stumbling blocks with the Inhumans, and I could see a couple of places where the Inhumans would have fit into the into the plot line, but they dropped that wisely. And, um, yeah, yeah, that that's what I'm going to say about this. Um... Again, no spoilers, but I'm going to talk about a couple of things, and there's going to be a couple of other YouTube channels out there that do the um, what's the difference or what you might miss and all that other stuff. Now, back in the late 80s, early 90s, I read Infinity Gauntlet as it was coming out, and I've been wondering how Marvel's going to swing this because... Um, they don't have the rights to a lot of the stuff that happened with the story, okay? Um, I'm sure you guys have done your research on Comics Explained and Complete Story and Linkara's Atop the Fourth Wall. A whole lot of different things have given you the Thanos quest and the Infinity Gauntlet and all that stuff to show you guys some of the source material. Now, they weren't going to do that movie. They can't do that movie. Here's the reason. The Infinity Gauntlet storyline is starring the Silver Surfer, which they don't have the rights to. It has guest appearances by the X-Men, which they don't have the rights to. And since they don't have the Silver Surfer, they don't have a good amount of the Marvel Cosmic Universe. People like Galactus and the Stranger and um, Mistress Love and ha Mistress Love and Master Hate, um, Lord Chaos, Lord Order. All, all the really big guys, not to mention the Living Tribunal. Um, so, since they don't have those things, they're kind of doing the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, but they're paying homage to Infinity because the Colipsidian, or the Black Order, that um, Thanos has wasn't introduced until 2007. So they're cramming in all the stuff that they need to cram in in order to give comic fans a little bit of knot to say, hey, we read these books too. Now, this movie is pretty dark, but outside of the darkness, 
since they didn't have the rights to the X-Men and they don't have the rights to the Silver Surfer because those are tied up, um, well, with Fox and the Fantastic Four and they didn't get those rights until the movie was in post-production. And let's face it, reshoots on that scale could not have been done, could not have been done. But what they had, the story that they gave us was actually good. It was a good story. And the story that they've been working toward the whole time before the Fox buyout is really apparent in this. Um, it was interesting to see what they did with the final Infinity Stone. Um, whatever your theory is, you're wrong. <laughs> um, not going to tell you what right is, but you you guessed poorly, as did I. Um, and all in all... Um, that's what I'm going to give on that. Now, the movie going experience itself, um, I got to hand it to you, Marvel. You did with Thanos what DC failed to do with Darkseid and Steppenwolf. And it kind of hurts my heart because with comic history, Thanos is, I don't want to say a ripoff, but he is derivative or inspired by Darkseid from Superman and the Justice League. Another Kirby creation, of course, um, with the Kirby and the new gods and apocalypse and all that stuff. And um, they had to change up his motivation for this. And the motivation that they gave him was very logical. OK, um, I'm going to say right off this whole thing of who's more right, Thanos um, from Infinity War or Killmonger from Black Panther. What I am going to say is I'm still more on Black Panther side. Uh, or I'm still more on Killmonger's side um, than I am on Thanos' side. Um, there were a few things in the movie that regular regular movie people or fans of the Marvel Universe will um, they'll appreciate. But as a comic nerd, um, there was a few things I was a little upset with. Um, one thing about this movie is I would have enjoyed it a whole lot more had I not seen Doctor Strange. That is, um, I'm doing my best to do this spoiler free. But yeah, so no Doctor Strange in my Marvel lineup. Cool, but you know, being a sorcerer myself, I had to see Doctor Strange when it came out. And I think that he was underutilized in what they did him for. I understand where they were going with the plot and the way that they wrote the plot and how... Um, they put him where he needed to be and the movie ended exactly where it was supposed to end for the homage to Infinity Gauntlet. Okay. Um, but I think it could have been done a little bit better. Not that I could write better, but I know there was a way to do it better. It just, it, that part kind of made me go, hang on, wait a minute. Why didn't this happen? Type thing. Um, but all in all. Um, as a movie going experience, I have never been in a theater so quiet. There was no cheering. There was no yelling. There was very little laughter. There wasn't even any clapping. People were riveted. Okay. Just riveted looking. And they're just like, wow, movie is on movie is on like that Eddie Izzard campaign with, you know, a guy arranging matches and then explosions and monkeys and car chases and people just um, nom, 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 nom. that, that, that was, that was what they were doing. And truth be told, I could see that. Um, this movie did have a lot more heart than I think the other Avengers movies had, which was, that was definitely a step in the right direction. Thanos is a very sympathetic villain, not as sympathetic as Killmonger, but very very sympathetic um <clears throat> in occult circles there is one axiom that we use which is um the devil never yells okay just just think about that um <clears throat> primarily because anything that has so much power and control has no need to raise their voice and they showed that um, the Cull Obsidian or the Black Order, I really like the way that they were shown on film. Um, specifically, well, okay, the standout star of um, the Cull Obsidian is most definitely, um, God, what's his name? Ebony Maw. Okay, Ebony Maw 
was the standout dude. That guy was just so smooth. Okay, so smooth, so awesome, um, so intimidating, and that was very cool. A um, couple of callbacks to Civil War, um, specifically where Spider-Man is concerned. Uh, and um, <clears throat> I'm not as hip as one might seem when it when it or as a lot of you guys are, so I don't really like a lot of meta pop culture references in in my entertainment unless it's set up specifically for that. Like Deadpool can do it all day, like all day. Um, if there was a She-Hulk movie, all day. But <clears throat> um, movie references or um people like Neil deGrasse Tyson making a um making a cameo in Batman versus Superman type thing. That kind of doesn't sit well with me, but that's a personal thing. That's that's a little bit of gripe. Um, but honestly, for the audience that it's out there for, which is primarily people who haven't been reading comics for the past 35 years, you guys are going to have a blast. Um, but being that this is my job, what I am going to say is um, I'm going to have to give this movie um, Back in the Deck's second highest rating. This movie is a solid full house. If not for a couple of things involving Doctor Strange and um, what was the other thing? Yeah, just a couple of things involving Doctor Strange and I, I say one or two things involving the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, this movie would have been a royal flush. No questions asked. But it was almost there. Like I said, there were just a couple of things that made me go, well, that shouldn't have happened, but it had to happen. And looking at it as someone who likes to write fiction, I see that it had to happen. I just didn't like the way it got there. Okay, that that was um, the number one thing. I'm looking forward to seeing where the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going from this point. Okay, because the MCU has done some good stuff. Um Mild spoiler. Oh, wait up uh, before you start cussing me out. There's only one stinger, and it's at the very end of the credits. Okay, so you're gonna have to sit through the credits, but that's it. It's one, and I liked it. It was a very good one. Um, of course, it was a commercial for another thing, but again, that's what they're there for. And this movie did not feel like a commercial for the next movie. It felt like a thank you note. For watching the past 18 so that was refreshing okay but as I said um this movie um very high full house we're talking really high full house we're talking like you know um call it aces over kings okay but yeah this is but this movie was not a royal flush unfortunately um so I definitely recommend seeing it um truth be told yeah um I can see why it was so hard to get tickets because the hype train said a lot. This movie was very good at, hey, look, the credits have rolled. Now let's get to it. There was no setting up of anyone because the movie assumes that you've seen at least half of the previous movies. And given the streaming service, DVD, Blu-rays, and how long these things happen to be in theaters, that's a fair assumption to make. So um, definitely head out and see it. It was fun. And Thanos is good. And this is coming from someone who spent a long time trying not to like Thanos because I don't like the idea of the dude who does what Thanos does over and over and over again. Um, now I'm going to give a mild spoiler. There were a couple of cameos that I was, su I was very surprised. Um, I'd forgotten about um, a certain um, star from a different movie that Marvel has something to do with and from a television show that I watch a lot I was not su I was surprised because I had forgotten that this person was in there and I like the role that they played which was kind of cool um but big spoiler I was thinking about this just last week in regards to Infinity War and we get the return of one of the better Marvel villains from the cinematic universe which was cool um, it, only for a cameo. I'm hoping that they do more with this character in the future because I really liked them and they were only in one movie. So let's just say, um, if you have a bald cap and some nail polish, you're good. Um, 
but yeah so all in all like i said um movie was shot well the score was good the sound effects were great um it was interesting to see demonites from wildcats that but i forgot that things went a little wonky but yeah the the creatures that are on the commercial for Wak for wakanda they look a lot like demonites i know they needed the generic monster things but i felt like that was a nod to a to me as a comic fan so outside of that again um high uh high high full house and definitely you know check out and seeing it um with the with the responses and the doobly do let's try and keep this spoiler free until at least may or at least until um cinco de mayo okay Let, let's say that that's a fair thing no spoiler talk until cinco de mayo it is now um it is April 28th, you know, the Saturday after it came out. And um, let's do that. Now, last um, bit of thing, since this video is starting to run a little long, um, I'm going to leave a link to our um, GoFundMe um, so that we can launch the website. And um, it's, it's doing pretty good. It's been up for not very long. But with your guys' help and all that jazz, we could really make this go and increase the video the quality of the videos that we got not to mention the regularity of publishing um i've now officially started the thing leave a comment um below it's not trolling or anything like that and a random person will be picked to get a back in the deck keychain and that puts you in the drawing for our monthly prize okay this this is good monthly prize of something really cool and something you know let's let's call it a shelf decoration but leave a random comment on this video or any of the other videos that we publish and one of you guys per show is going to get a keychain and that puts you in the drawing for the next biggest prize and we're going to be doing that weekly monthly quarterly six months and then at the end of the year there's going to be something big I don't know how much it's going to cost me, but there's going to be something big. And that's my way to say, hey, thank you guys for sticking out there. Um, there's a whole lot of people on the Internet, but I'm still trying to make a voice for people of color, women, LGBT and the disabled. So thank you guys very much. This has been Solar Gray, and I'll see you next time on the dark side of the room. <laughs>